Welcome to Mendocino, California. So pretty, I'm getting so excited. One of the most beautiful stretches of coastline in the world. Wow. I can't believe I'm looking at this right now. I've heard this part of California described as being in a perpetual spring. <sighs> it's super, super cool. That's always been true for me. The moody coastline bringing in fog or sometimes soft sunlight. You can argue I'm biased as this is my home state, but I think if you come to, you'll find yourself amazed. I met up with some of my best girlfriends for this trip, beginning in the Bay Area and then driving up to Mendocino. This drive is gorgeous, though be forewarned, it's windy. We had a bit of rain on our way in, but just as we were pulling in, the clouds began to clear and everything looked so beautiful. So excited! The thing about Mendocino is it is full of gorgeous little seaside inns. And one of the most important things you can do is pick a beautiful place to stay that is quaint and gorgeous. Right. Look how cute this is! <laughs> this is so nice. This is super cute. Holy moly! <laughs> it's magical. There's a secret garden over there. <laughs> they gave us champagne? Yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Fancy AF. It's so romantic. Is it? <laughs> Welcome to the Mendocino Coast. We want to wish all of you a fabulous girls weekend. Whoa. If there's anything else we can do for an even more <laughs> memorable visit, please do let us know. Enjoy. Like the air here just feels so good when you breathe it in. You've got like the pine and the redwoods and like the salty sea air. It's just really, really nice. <laughs> The sunset was amazing, and it was only our first night. Little did we know that that was just a taste of what was to come. Okay, so it's about 8.20. I've been up for an hour and a half, and that means it's breakfast time. The other girls are still sleeping, but I, I'm gonna have to get started. <laughs> so we've got some really good options here, like eggnog French toast. We've also got NorCal chilaquiles, but I think I'm just gonna go with the classic to farm fresh eggs any style. <laughs> I know people like to think of California as the hot southern beaches in Hollywood, but there's so much more. It's the kind of place where if you look out at the Pacific long enough, you'll see spouts of dolphins and whales. And speaking of the Pacific, she's moody, with deep greenish blue waves carving the rocky coastline, playing host to seabirds and the trees that frame her. It seems like everything grows and flourishes in this breadbasket, and it's easy to see why it's long enchanted poets, writers, and human beings in general. So in such a magical place with practically limitless things to do, how do you narrow it down when you've only got a weekend? After an amazing sunset last night, a fantastic breakfast, we decided to head out to the Russian Gulch State Park. This is probably one of the most famous parks in the area because it has beautiful hiking trails. It's like spongy. We chose the Fern Trail. Ranger Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of this stuff looks like it would be in the ocean. Yeah. This. It looks like it would be underwater. One of my favorite things about it were all of the redwood trees that we encountered a few miles in. This mist is like totally crazy. <laughs> it's, I could sit here for a long time just petting this. <laughs> Okay. 
The hike to the waterfall is about three miles and you can either turn it into a loop or you can just go back the way you came. Another famous feature of the park is this bridge. There is a little lookout that you can hike to to see it, but since we were already done with hiking for the day, we decided to hop in the car and make our way up to Fort Bragg. Now, Fort Bragg's arguably most famous feature is the glass sand beach. The thing to know about Glass Beach is it actually used to be a dump. So the glass doesn't really belong there, of course, but over time the ocean eroded the dump and a lot of the glass bottles ended up becoming this beautiful sand. I had visited the beach previously and I was super disappointed. Stopped by Glass Beach in Fort Bragg and I'm really sorry to report people have come and taken all the glass. People really wanted this glass for their homes, so over time they collected it off the beach. But we just decided, hey, let's go catch a sunset there because we remembered the rocky cliffs being beautiful. And this time, I don't know what happened, but there was glass. Maybe it was the tide. Maybe it was just our luck or the way the light was catching it. But previously, I hadn't seen any glass on this beach. And now, out of nowhere, here it was. We just came for the sunset and then we got glass too. Yeah, yeah. Then on top of that, we saw seals having their pups. Hell yeah! Oh! Uh -huh. Needless to say, it was the cherry on top of a fantastic day. The next day we woke up bright and early, and while our other two friends slept, my friend Paige and I decided to check out the 10 mile dunes. So like that? Yeah. Yes. The guy at the front desk at Brewery Gulch Inn told me about the 10 mile beach that was full of dunes. Being a dune enthusiast, I just wanted to check it out for myself. They were kind of cool. Next on our way, we stopped by McCarricker State Park where we found some beautiful abalone shells. And of course, our little friends, the seals from last night. From there, we picked up our other friends and headed to Jug Handle State Park. We didn't really know anything about Jug Handle other than we read that there were some tide pools which we wanted to check out. Oh, nice. However, pretty much right away, we discovered something crazy, cool, amazing. Well, what do we have here? <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Here we go. This is called the Pygmy Forest, and there are several different Pygmy Forests all throughout the Mendocino Coast in different state parks. But we stumbled on this one quite by accident, and I have to say, it was incredible. I like it too! Oh my gosh! <laughs> there is a That's there. super cool! There's a witch's coven. <laughs> the pygmy forest isn't really something that was on our radar. Do it again, because it looks like it was your first time. There she goes. There we go. We saw a sign for it when we walked in and ended up checking it out kind of by mistake. I don't know why the trees grow like this. It's like a natural maze or something. Well, actually, I just Googled it. It turns out that this is not actually the perfect environment for them, and they ended up growing in these weird ways just as a way to try to survive. But if you ask me, it is so creepy and cool at the same time. It's just amazing to walk through. This pygmy forest is honestly awesome. I keep thinking fairies live here, yeah. right? Who, live here? Who lives here? We live here. Since we had come to Jug Handle for the tide pools, we still had to go check those out. They were just okay. The beach, though, was absolutely stunning. Next, we headed to the Noyo Harbor Inn to have the amazing dinner there. I'm not really good at describing food, but suffice to say, we all loved Thank what you. we ordered and I highly recommend that you eat there. Potatoes. Good morning, Mendocino. It's a beautiful day, the sun is shining. We're taking a little walk in the morning, learning a bit about history. Since this is our final day, we had to end it with an institution. Are you excited? So excited. <laughs> so, skunk rail bikes is a thing to do here in Fort Bragg, and I didn't understand why 
anyone would name a company that, <laughs> but apparently back in the day, the trains smelled like that. Um, I guess the gasoline they were using, so the locals said it smelled like a skunk train. Anyway, we're gonna head to the Redwoods now, which I've been looking forward to this whole trip, and we're going to like pedal our way through. I'm just so excited to be amongst the tallest trees on planet Earth. The skunk train has two <laughs> options. You can either take an actual train or you can pedal yourself into the Redwood Forest and then go for a little hike. Okay, this is like really giving me Mario Kart vibes. I was always Bowser. What were you? Uh, Yoshi. Yeah, Yoshi was the shit until I realized Bowser, you just like bump into stuff. He has like extra powers because he's big. The Redwood trees are the tallest in the world. And there are several varieties. You have the coastal redwood, which you see here, and then you have the giant sequoia, which can get huge around. Those are so cool. <laughs> Super right? strength. The coastal redwoods don't tend to do that, but they are amazingly tall. It's really like spongy and fibrous. The other thing you will find in abundance in a redwood forest are these ferns. Ferns everywhere. The ferns really dig the symbiotic relationship they must be getting from these redwoods. Just fell and got so muddy. Well, if this is Mario Kart, then I just slipped all over the banana pill and Yoshi won. They didn't see me fall, let's see what they think. Check out my new look. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. You don't like it? I love it, I love it. <laughs> After finishing up our skunk train experience, we headed back down to Mendocino. And while there, I definitely recommend that you stop by the town proper. It is so cute and it's full of little boutiques. Now, if you guessed that these are higher end, you'd be correct, but we did find a pretty cool thrift store. You guys, we found an amazing place to catch the sunset. Now you can argue that pretty much anywhere in Mendocino, as long as you're coastal, is a wonderful place to catch it. But I was so partial to the way it just perfectly colored everything at Van Damme State Park. Plus, there weren't even all that many people around. Look, there's so much to do in Mendocino that it's kind of hard to narrow it down. But I think that we did a pretty good job.